Today might be one of the most important videos we're ever gonna cover on this series, and that is reward games. How to get your dog motivated to want to train with you and play with you. This can be difficult for people. Some dogs like food more, some dogs like toys more. But my goal with Bolt is to get him to love both food and toys and to get him to love other types of reinforcers like pets, praise, and life events. We're gonna talk about all that here on today's video. One of the best ways to start your relationship with your dog is to observe and to watch and to figure out what does my dog like the most? Do they like to play the toy? Do they like to play balls? Do they like to play tug? Do they like hot dogs or do they like chicken or do they like freeze dried salmon? There is a bunch of things that our dogs like and don't like and it is our job to be a good observer in these situations. Sometimes our dogs get a little bored of whatever treats we're giving them or in certain environments they're just not interested in eating a treat at all. If you've experienced this you're not alone. It's very common and rewards aren't just about what treat you're giving them or what toy you're giving them. The rewards can be things like going on a walk. Rewards can be a squirrel. A reward can be anything your dog finds interesting and exciting. And when we talk about reward when it comes to behaviors, it's something that helps increase the behaviors we want them to do or increase behaviors in general. Now, that is a key step in understanding all your dog's training. And we could do a deep dive in this all day long, but I'll keep it short for you guys. Behavior that is rewarded is likely to increase. We've talked about this on the series before, and it's important that we reward the behaviors of our dog that we want them to increase. And to do that, we have to know what our dog likes for rewards. Now, as we saw in a previous episode, we saw me working with Bolt with a pile of toys and getting him to play in a variety of different ways. We've been working on tug, we've been working on fetch, uh, but we also been working on switching back and forth between food and toys. Now, one of the games I want you guys to play with today is a game that comes from Ken Ramirez. And basically, we're going to increase the value of pets. So I call this the pet game. And basically, what you're going to do is you're going to take your dog's treat. And what you're going to do is simply pet your puppy and then give them a treat. What will start to happen is your dog will start to associate the pet with getting a treat. And we're simply increasing the value of pet by doing this. And your dog will slowly start to understand that as I get pet and we get a treat, you can use the pet as a reinforcer itself because it predicts them getting a treat. Now food is typically a great form of reinforcement because they need food to survive. They don't need toys to survive. They don't need pets to survive. They don't need anything else really other than food and water. So we can use food as an easy way to reinforce our dog's behaviors, but we also wanna build up a variety of reinforcers. You can do the same game also with toys. Sometimes we can use toys like a puzzle toy. We can get them to bite on a puzzle toy. And when they bite on a puzzle toy, food pops out. So we can increase the value of the puzzle toy. You can also start to get your dog to start to play with a toy and then give them some treats and play with a toy and then give them some treats. Where this will start to develop a relationship with our dog is if we can get our dogs to be used to playing with toys or using treats or using pets as a form of reinforcement, we can go into almost any environment and keep our dog's attention on us and reward our dog for the right behavior. Because here's the key, if your dog goes into an environment, let's just say the park, and maybe they just had breakfast or maybe they just aren't feeling what you brought them, we have to be able to reward our dog in these situations. Otherwise, they're going to find reinforcement for themselves. Hence why you guys are probably experiencing a problem with your dog's attention and focus in these environments because they don't find food reinforcing that environment and they want to go chase that squirrel or find that smell or whatever's on the ground. And so what we can do is when we have the pet then treat game is we can also get our dog to always have some form of reinforcement in that environment, whether it be food, pets, or toys. And that will give us a better chance to keep our dog's attention. Now for Bolt, I've been doing this very same thing. Every new place we've been going to, we've been using different types of rewards. I've noticed that when I try to get him to play with 
toys in new environments, it's a little bit more difficult because he's not used to playing with toys in those environments. Sometimes our toy games are set into wherever we play them, in the middle of the living room, our backyard. And if we only play fetch or tug in those two places, bringing those toys into new environments becomes difficult. So I encourage you to start understanding that just because your dog can play 20 minutes of fetch in your backyard doesn't mean they can play 20 minutes of fetch at the park. So you may have to start off small and start off very slowly and retrain your dog's fetch behavior or your dog's tug behavior in all these new environments. And when you do, you can start getting your dog to really start to focus on you and find you more reinforcing than anything else in the environment. Next time on Pupford, we're going to cover leash training. So you can start to get your dog out in those environments and help your dog to be successful listening to you and having fun.